Welcome to this week's Quick Charge. Jesus once asked his disciples, what are the people saying about me? Who do they believe that I am? They answered, some are convinced that you are John the baptizer. Others say you are Elijah reincarnated or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So why this question? Who do men say that I am? Does that even matter? Who cares what people think about Jesus? Why is this even relevant? But he asked it for a very good reason. Jesus wants all of us to realize that there is a purely human, natural assessment of who he is that is quite commonplace, not only in the world, but also in the church. Though some of us could be carrying a largely human assessment and assumption or belief of who he is. I can, in fact, subscribe to a very normal, harmless, mediocre, uninspired assessment of who Jesus really is, and there would be no revelation in it at all. I could be way off base. I could be missing the mark. I could be believing and concluding him to be something much less than what he is right here and right now. Ironically, the answers of men and that natural perspective are not really all that bad. Pretty impressive, in fact. Who wouldn't want to be compared to John the Baptist or be in the same company with Elijah or mentioned in the same sentence as Jeremiah? Those are big names. They're heavy hitters. They're prophetic giants. What an honor. But no matter how impressive they might be, they're all powerless, faithless answers. They miss the mark by a mile. I can let information from my experience and from my circumstances dictate to me who Jesus really is, as well as from my difficulties and my adversities, as well as my disappointments and my discouragements or my failures or my frustrations, all of that information is going to give me a wrong answer because that's what men say. That's what the flesh says. All of those are natural assessments and all of that information is after the order of men. And that kind of assessment and natural assumption or conclusion doesn't give me access to the weight of his authority, even though it's already been given. Just because we have the tool or the weapon, it doesn't mean it's effective. Gehazi laid Elisha's staff on the boy, but it didn't raise him back to life. Why? Because Gehazi was a man after the order of men. He was naturally minded, even going so far as to seek the spoils that were meant for Naaman. The seven sons mentioned in the book of Acts, they used the right tool. They used the name of Jesus, but they weren't men of God. They weren't after the spirit. They just had some information. And so that authoritative tool was worthless for them. We can't stand in his authority if we mistakenly conclude and live like Jesus is less than who he really is. Oh, he's a lot like John the Baptist, or he's a bit like Elijah, or he's somewhat like Jeremiah. But Peter said, you are the son of the living God, the living God. This is my Jesus. So Jesus asks, but you, who do you say that I am? So who is he to you? Who do you act like he is, really? Who do you live like he is, actually? Who does the Father say he is? That's the only thing that enables us to put our weight into the challenging issues of life because flesh and blood never get it right. This answer comes only by a renewed revelation of who he is. So who is he to you, actually? Join me next week for another quick charge. God bless.